Chapter 3a, section 3.2, we're going to balance nuclear equations. We're going to describe inherent dangers associated with all types of radiation, how to detect them in common uses, as well as the relationship between the mass of a radioactive particle and its penetrating power. So, balancing nuclear equations. Recall that there's an arrow in the center of an equation or reaction, and everything before are called the reactants, and everything after are called the products. The masses have to be equal before and after as do the atomic numbers. So, first of all, I am missing an atomic number here. So I will go to the periodic table and I will locate aluminum and notice here is its atomic number, 13. So I will place 13 here. Now, 27 plus 4 is going to equal 31. That means that the masses of phosphorus and whatever this is must also equal 31. So 30 plus 1 is going to give me my 31. Now at the bottom 13 plus 2 is going to equal 15. So the mass here and here have to also equal 15. That's going to be a 0. 15 plus 0 equals 15. So what symbol has 1 over 0? And if we look back at our notes, we'll find that that's a neutron. And so neutron is what we're missing in this particular reaction. And here's our final answer without the brackets. So let's practice a few more. So number one, we have 42 potassium or potassium 42. We need to know the atomic number of potassium. So if we look here, potassium has an atomic number of 19. So we'll write 19. And then on the right hand side, 42 minus 0 is going to give us a 42. 19 minus a negative 1 or 19 plus 1 is going to give us 20. You can check your work because 20 minus 1 should equal 19 and it does. Now we need to know what is element number 20. And we look here, element number 20 is calcium. So our symbol is going to be calcium. Number 2, plutonium with a mass of 239 has an atomic number of 94. So we'll place a 94 here. Now 239 minus 4 equals 235. 94 minus 2 equals 92. And when we look on our periodic table, 92 is the symbol uranium. Number 3, 235 over 92 uranium yields, what is this nucleus, plus 231 over 90 thorium. So 231 plus this number have to equal 235. Or you could say 235 minus 231 equals 4. And then 92 minus 90 equals 2. And the atomic number 2 is helium. So this is emitted an alpha particle. This was an alpha decay, similar to number two, which is also an alpha decay. And number one was a beta decay. Number four, we're going to have one and three equals four. One and one equals two. So notice I added these together. And we know four over two represents helium. This is known as a fusion reaction. And then number five, we have six plus one equals seven. So four plus three is going to equal seven on the right. And then three and zero equals three. And two and one is going to equal three on the right hand side. And if we look on the periodic table, element number one is hydrogen. So our final answer without the brackets. is 3 over 1 hydrogen. Okay, so radiation danger. You should be familiar with the fact that whenever beta particles and gamma rays are outside of your body, they are most dangerous because they are capable of penetrating through your skin. Radiation from alpha particle sources, however, are not dangerous outside of the body because, because an alpha particle cannot penetrate through your skin. However, the opposite of this, if you were to swallow 
something generating radiation in the form of beta or gamma particles, it would be less harmful for you than if you swallowed something that was emitting alpha particles. This is because the beta and the gamma, if swallowed, would be able to escape your body. However, the alpha particles, if swallowed, would be trapped in your body and then essentially playing pinball with your insides, causing them to become cancerous. So a Geiger counter, also known as a radiation detector, has been commonly used in order to detect counts of radiation particles emitted from various radioactive sources. So you use a Geiger counter or a Geiger molar tube in which it will count literally every particle being emitted from a radioactive source and then the sensor puts the data to a computer. When radiation actually comes into contact with cells in the body, ionization occurs in which the cell is pretty much mutated into a cancerous form. And so here's an example of such a mutation. Penetrating power is represented in this diagram in that if an alpha particle were emitted, notice that it would be stopped by something as simple as paper. However, a beta particle which is an electron, could go through paper, however, would roughly be stopped by your skin. And actually, beta particles would be stopped by metals, like aluminum foil. And then gamma radiation would go through paper, go through the hand, and can even go through the metal beam. However, it would take a very thick amount of concrete or lead in order to stop gamma radiation. So this is the reason why they have their different penetrating powers. Alpha can penetrate the least, is stopped by paper because it's so massive. Whereas beta, because it's moderately massive, can penetrate through paper and somewhat through the skin, but is stopped by aluminum foil. And then gamma radiation has no mass at all. So it is capable, that's why it's capable of going through paper, going through metals, anything but thick concrete and thick lead. So gamma has the strongest penetrating power, beta has moderate, and alpha has the weakest, all due to their varying masses. Some uses of radiation. We can use it to sterilize medical equipment. It can be used as radioisotopes or tracers where they're injected into the body and then scans can be done in order to detect the radioactive isotope, thus showing us various medical problems that may be occurring on the inside of our bodies. Here's another example of using a tracer that's injected into the body in order to give a picture of cancerous cells like lung cancer. Gamma rays do not ionize cells inside the body so no damage could be caused. However, alpha and beta particles would ionize cells or mutate them which could lead to the formation of cancer cells which is why it's most dangerous to swallow alpha and beta emitting radioisotopes. So whatever radioisotope is swallowed must have a short half-life, a few hours, so that by the time an hour or so has passed, it will have decayed down to a point where it's stable and thus safe for the body. A short half-life ensures that all radiation inside a patient leaves the body quickly and does not accumulate. So other uses of radiation in detection, like paper detectors, for example, or in smoke alarms or smoke detectors. A smoke alarm is actually emitting alpha radiation in the home in order to ionize in the presence of smoke, setting off the alarm. In the next section, we'll look at half-lives a little more in a little more detail.